Our next speakers are from IBM, which has been a bedrock uh, of uh, support for the Linux Foundation. You know, IBM was the company that launched uh, the Linux craze by uh, doing a long Super Bowl ad uh, many years ago that sort of got Linux in front of millions and millions of people worldwide. IBM has continually supported our organization in projects like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, the OpenJS Foundation, uh, and our Open Mainframe project. Today we have Ross Morey, the general manager for IBM Z here, joined by Martin Kennedy, the managing director of enterprise platforms and storage, to talk to us about how a choice of IT infrastructure can play a key role in how you achieve your sustainability goals. Please welcome Ross Morey and Martin Kennedy. Thank you. Great to, uh, great to see you all. It's great to be in person at an open source summit. I'm really happy to be here. And thank you to the Linux Foundation for having us on stage. Martin Kennedy from Citigroup is going to join me in a few moments out here. But I just want to set the stage and talk about um, what's going on in the world that affects all of us. And I know it affects you. And that is, over the past few years, the dominant topic has been around cyber threats. It's been around hybrid cloud. It's about, been about digital transformation. But now the talk is also being added to, and that is around sustainability. And while many businesses have recognized the importance of sustainability, they're just now prioritizing it into their corporate policies and into practice. And did you know that there are more than 2,500 um, climate laws and policies enacted already today globally? And that's no surprise to us. And in fact, in a recent Institute for Business Value study, the CEO said the sustainability was the number one challenge for them over the next two to three years. So CEOs recognize that sustainability is something important to their shareholders, their company, and the impact they make on the world. So within IBM, we've done some research that shows the, the businesses that we've surveyed that 85% of those businesses have a sustainability strategy, but only 35% actually have begun to act on that. And so with the looming energy crisis and other things that are, that are getting our attention these days, I think there's a renewed sense of urgency of what are we going to do? What is the impact of IT going to have on sustainability and getting towards sustainability goals, improving as an area? So data centers around the world, if you, if you study them, use about 200 to 250 terawatt hours of electricity every year. That's a lot of power, and that's growing as IT demands grow. One way to help address this is by becoming more efficient in your infrastructure. IBM Linux One is there today and is about um, solving this problem. Now, this is a very, very powerful enterprise Linux server. It's designed to run hundreds and thousands of workloads simultaneously, and it's done so in a single system image. The design point enables higher levels of efficiency than alternate platforms. And we can show you case studies, and we'd be happy to talk to you about this, where you could reduce your energy consumption in your, of your servers by 75%, taking a very big chunk out of the IT electrical usage that you use, and also significantly changing your carbon footprint each year. So the other challenges are still there. We talked about cyber threats, digital transformation. but we all know that sustainability is high priority. There are solutions to this now. But along with those other challenges, we can't, we can't lose sight of them. Data breaches we've seen in 2022, the average is now costing a company $4.35 million. And in a recent survey we did, 85% of the organizations said that they had had data breach, had more than one data breach. So data security is still a top threat for all of us. Now we're the leader, we believe we're the leader in secure infrastructure and the new Linux One Emperor 4 takes this to a new level. 
The confidential computing environment is our fifth generation secure enclave in this, in this system, brings protection to data in, at rest, in flight, and in use. And it protects it not only from external threats, but from insider threats. It can give you technical assurance that your data is protected against human intervention, friend or foe. So privileged, uh, privileged credentials can no longer become suspect in your data strategy. A second area of demand relates to IT services and the increased demand we're all seeing, digital transformation, and what the remnants of the COVID pandemic have had a profound change in that. We've seen a dramatic increase in internet usage. I know you've all seen that. Internet usage was up 40% two years ago, and it's growing more and more. It's expected to be two to three times that by 2025. So your infrastructure must scale, must be secure, and must meet the ever-changing demands of IT. Now with Linux One, you can align your, those needs with your goals. So this week we announced a new Linux One system. It's called the Emperor 4. It's delivering innovations across the stack. It's based on the IBM Telem processor. It delivers significant performance, capability, capacity, scalability, security, and it's got on-chip AI acceleration to boot. So you can really get real-time insights at scale. So what would you do with all this power? What can you do with all this power? What you can do with it is you can do server consolidation at a massive scale. I'm talking about we have clients doing tens of thousands, 50,000, 100,000 scale-out servers consolidated onto a small set of Linux One footprints. This is designed to keep it more secure, run at a higher performance, and to help you meet your sustainability goals. So with that, I'd like to bring out now Martin Candy from Citigroup. Martin and I have been working on a project in open source with Citi over these past few months, and he's got some things to say about that. Martin, please join us. Good to see you, Martin. So I think the world knows about Citigroup as this large investment bank, large financial services corporation. What is it like to run an IT shop for such a big organization? Well, first of all, thanks for having me and thanks for the opportunity to share our experience with uh, open source. So Citi is indeed a very large and very global bank and that adds a lot of dimensions to the needs of our clients and our businesses. You know, we in technology are always looking for new innovative ways to enhance our systems, evolve our security, and just, you know, improve the digital experience that our customers have uh, come to expect. But in today's world, um, as we deploy more and more cloud native capabilities, we have other considerations. You've got cyber, you've got scalability, yep. and Citi is very focused on sustainability right now. Um, Citi launched a a sustainable progress strategy with the ambition of being the world's leading bank in the transition to a low carbon economy, right? And a key pillar of that strategy is um, sustainable operations. Now couple that with Citi's commitment to managing risk, evolving security, mm -hmm. and being prepared for any cyber event now or in the future is what keeps the engineers and technologists very, very focused at Citi today. That's great. And I know that Citi runs a lot of open source. And as I said just now, you know, we worked on a MongoDB project, pretty big one, in right. fact. And uh, maybe you should, could share some of that with the audience. Yeah. So as I mentioned, we're very focused on sustainable operations, right? And we knew from the experience we had with Linux One that it's very environmentally friendly. Uh, we knew it was very secure, shipping with things like cryptographic coprocessors and quantum-safe firmware. Uh, we also had familiarity with the hypervisors. We knew they were very mature, secure, and very functionally rich. So we felt that Linux One sh was a place we should be looking in terms of trying to achieve our sustainability goals. So we surveyed the landscape of services that we provide to our businesses globally. And after meeting with our Mongo engineering team, you know, we felt Mongo would be a good DBMS to target to the Linux One platform. Um, our Mongo team was also very interested in capabilities we had around storage. You know, we had implemented the ability to create immutable backups 
and uh, encrypt data at rest, and they were very interested in integrating that natively into their service as opposed to having to layer that on top of their service. And my storage engineers were very interested in leveraging some very advanced storage virtualization technologies that we thought would go a long way to our sustainability goals. So as you know, we partnered with you and your team at IBM, the team at Mongo. You know, we laid out some very detailed plans, set some very specific goals and success criteria. Um, you know, stood up all the servers we needed on the Linux One platform using the Cloud Infrastructure Center, and uh, you know, poured it over some very significant, you know, uh, meaningful Mongo workloads, and then spent the next three months evaluating, you know, where we were relative to the alternative hosting platform, and we were indeed able to validate our assumptions. We met or exceeded all of the goals we had laid out for ourselves. At that point, you know, made the decision to target Mongo to Linux One in our data centers globally. Well, that's great, and I, I know I've been along the journey with you, but now it's in production, it's running. <laughs> what do you think of the results? What, do you, what does your team think of the results? Yeah, so we are fairly well along with this at this point. Um, you know, and as I mentioned, we had some very specific, you know, goals and, and success criteria, and I could start, you know, by saying that the Linux One platform actually performed 15% better than the the platform we had migrated from, which was a, you know, actually a, a really good result. You know, we were not expecting that much improvement, but everybody was was very satisfied, you know, with with that outcome. But more importantly, we significantly overachieved in our compute and storage virtualization goals. You know, um, we were also able to take advantage of the elastic cap uh, capacity capabilities of Linux One, the ability to add compute and memory resources dynamically in real time. And that's a, that's a nice feature to have if you're challenged with managing to unexpected demand. But it also allowed us to keep, you know, to uh, keep the utilization of our Linux One systems relatively high, knowing that we could add capacity whenever we needed it. Uh, we also took full advantage of the uh, enhanced compression algorithms are actually in the microprocessors on the machine. And that allowed us to really optimize the, the Mongo backup process. And then finally, we were successful at creating those immutable encrypted um, backups that can rapidly be restored in real time. So, you know, overall, a, a really, really good outcome. We were able to take an innovative technology, apply it to one of our key service offerings, in this case, Mongo, and, you know, improve the performance and functionality of that service. You know, and, and most important, we were able to make a very, very significant mark in our sustainability goals. That was music to my ears <laughs> so, so much. Thank you. So what's next? What's the future hold for City and IT? Well, uh, on the IT side, I, mean, I will tell you, Ross, that we remain very focused on our technical strategies, uh, very focused on public and private cloud, obviously very focused on cyber and sustainability, and of course, you know, uh, you know the other aspects of hosting things in the, in the data centers. Um, I can tell you, based on what we were able to demonstrate with Mongo, we're looking at other DBMSs now. We have pilots already underway with things like Postgres and Oracle, uh, both really proving to be good candidates for the platform already. Uh, we're looking at our container strategy. You know, we're looking at Kubernetes OpenShift in particular, looking to see what we can do to host those workloads on the platform, again, with the goal of substantially reducing power, space, and cooling requirements. You know, and finally, we are looking at, um, you know, what we could potentially do with those inference engines in the, in the telem processes themselves. You know, we, we believe if we're successful with taking analytics back into the data flow, not only can that really improve our analytic capability, but it can eliminate the need to stand up that high latency off-platform infrastructure that's typically used to do analytics and, and transaction scoring today. And that, those, those technologies are the worst violators in terms of you know, uh, sustainability, and they use GPUs and other high energy, you know, platforms. So we've got a lot of, you know, a lot of things on the plate. You know, the technologists at Citigroup, which is an outstanding team of people, you know, is focused, as I mentioned, to use innovation to improve our systems and to just really improve our client experience. Super. Thank you for sharing all of that, and thank you for being such a great partner, Martin. I really appreciate you joining me here today. Yeah, my pleasure, Ross. Thank you. Thanks. So where do we go from there? Um, higher performance, greater scalability and flexibility, um, meeting or beating sustainability goals for a large global enterprise. Um, I think Martin has just said it all, what, what can be done with this platform. There's a lot of technology 
that can really move your, your um, business forward. So what we're gonna go from here is that we would really like for you to learn more about this. Would you like to learn how to cut your electrical usage by 75%? Would you like to make a six, significant, substantial impact to your global carbon footprint every year? Would you like to do that in the most secure way, in a flexible way? Please come listen to this panel that's designing and implementing sustainable solutions, which is later today, it's at uh, 10 afternoon, it's in LIFE room one, level two, not room two, level, room one, level one. And there's a Martin, as well as the CEO of a startup company, uh, Home Lending Pal, and some other experts from Mongo and IBM that can, will discuss things and answer your questions. And also, if you'd like to learn more, please come to our booth. We'd love to talk to you. You could have fun playing our, our Space Rover Challenge game. Um, there's a sustainability demo. There's experts there that could talk to you about what you could do differently to change the game in your company. And there's a Linux One Plexi there. If you like to geek out on hardware, you can look inside a Linux One and see what, what's, what it's made up of. And there are some giveaways. So thanks for joining us here today and listening to our story about Linux One Emperor 4 and Citigroup's journey with open source and consolidation and meeting their sustainability goals. And I want to thank the Linux Foundation again for having us here and I hope you really enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Russ. Nice job.